Good morning, afternoon, or evening. Bryn with Train by Techs here. We have a 2012 Ram 1500 5.7 liter with a customer concern of a no crank condition. Came in on a tow truck yesterday evening and we've uh, started looking at it. We actually diagnosed this vehicle and we repaired it, but I wanted to show you what we found. So uh, let me do that. All right, cool. All right, we'll, uh, we'll be back in just a moment. So these are the fault codes that we have. Um, first one, the central gateway has a DTT uh, B2101 ignition run start circuit low. And then radio has, let's see, system voltage high, uh, HVAC, recirculation door stuff, not related. Um, wireless control module has invalid key and secret key mismatch. That looks interesting, but it's stored and we have a no crank condition now. And let's see here. We have, sorry about the glare, uh, door module, battery input, ECU reset, recovery. Let's see what else. Oh, you know what? I'm going to go back. The one that uh, strikes my attention for sure God dang, is this this active fault code that we had this is a screenshot of course I like I mentioned we've diagnosed and repaired it already but this B2101 from the central gateway which of course in this case is a totally integrated power module or tip them uh, this active ignition run start input circuit low um, that looked interesting to us but let me go back here this is some well, well that is not Oh, bummer, I don't think I got the data that I was looking for. Oh, shoot. There we go. This is the fault code. Let me go back. Now, of course, because it's fixed, it's it's no longer active. It's stored. But if we go to live data, sorry about my fingernails. I actually worked on a car today. I fixed a smart car, an oil pan. So, and we, uh, I don't know, I get lazy and don't get gloves. But over the top right ignition run start sense. Uh, that was one thing that we noticed pretty much right away when we started looking at data in the central gateway or tip them. Uh, with the key in the on position, that was showing zero volts, even though the top left one was showing run start position. Um, no, it wasn't actually. That was showing, I think if it was showing off. But if you went into the wireless ignition node, which is basically uh, um, the halo ignition, it's the ignition node, which is like an ignition switch, basically, but it's a module on this. When we went into there, everything was showing the appropriate ignition switch uh, position. So this is going to be glary. I apologize. But when we looked at the service information, well, basically we found out and found that there was a hard wire uh, switch basically the ignition run start control output circuit is hardwired between the wireless ignition node again like an ignition switch a modern ignition switch module to the totally integrated power module um, the the code is set because the TIPM recognizes that the ignition switch status over the bus shows that it's on but the hardwired circuit there's not 12 volts on that hardwired hard wire circuit, so that's why it shows circuit low. So you can see here possible causes being short to ground or open circuit. So when we looked at data, let's see if we can go back in here. Dang it. When we looked at data, uh, this was showing zero volts. So, going back to the service information, I mean, the circuit's pretty simple. You have the wireless ignition node, and it's just this, you know, 20 gauge pink and white wire that goes to the TIPM. Uh, and it should be present anytime the key is on. Well, the TIPM's showing zero volts. So, the first thing we do is this pink and white wire. Here, 
Uh, that's that should have 12 volts when the key's in the on position, and we had 12 volts there. So the next step, come with me. It takes a while. You guys know what I'm talking about. You, you. Anyways, we have this tipum, and we're, we, according to the diagram, we had. We needed to look at C7. You can see that C7 pin 30. So when you look at service information, most of the time when you just want to know fuse and relay configuration, they'll want to show you the connector configuration. In this case, I wanted to see connector configuration, and the first the first few that I found just wanted to show me fuse and relay configuration. When I finally did see um, location of C7, it's a pretty much a... It shows the whole engine compartment and it shows this tipum area and it's pointing to like a general location. Actually, it looks like it's pointing to this connector. But looking at the diagram more closely, it's a 50 wire connector. And looking at the tipum closely, there was two 50 wire uh, connectors. This one and the one over here. And these did not match and that center one in the back didn't match. So we knew we needed to have a find a pink wire, a pink, pink wire white tracer in the terminal 30 in this connector and that's when we could see that one you can see there are kind of stab marks on that uh, actually what you're seeing is probably the there is some penetration marks but um, the clear nail polish already applied there so that's our pink wire when we checked there we had no voltage there so and you know you guys have probably been in this position let me see if I can turn this camera back around basically Again, I apologize for the audio. I don't have my mic uh, ready. But you guys have been in this position. Um, when I looked at the wire at the tipum, uh, I, there was, like I said, there was only two 50-pin terminals in that uh, on the at the tipum, and one of them didn't have anything in 30, and the other one had a pink wire in 30. I, it wasn't pink and white like the wiring diagram suggests, which doesn't necessarily mean anything. But you guys have been in this situation where you want to test a circuit you're not 100 percent sure you're like really sure pretty sure that that's the wire but you're not 100 percent sure and you're always kind of worried um in this case that circuit should have 12 volts when the keys in the on position the tip and would recognize that and allow the car to start and it didn't recognize it because it wasn't there so what do we want to do we kind of want to apply 12 volts to it so uh, but that's kind of scary if you're not 100 percent sure so i'll show you what we did so like I said, you've got the you look at service information to try to figure out which one's C7. It's not really obvious, um, but after determining, you know, it's a 50-pin terminal connector, 50-terminal connector, seeing that there's only two of them and only one of them has a pink wire and a cavity 30, it's not pink and white like the wiring diagram suggests, but it's probably the right one, but you're not sure. So uh, we need to test this thing. We need to grab that circuit and, you know, technically if we were confident, I guess we could apply 12 volts to it and see what we have. But, you know, you don't want to just apply t power probe 12 volts to a circuit that you're not 100% sure. So what I did is I got a test light, I attached it to a positive, and, and I would just touch the other end of the test light. I would put it in there, basically, and monitor this top right ignition run start sense. Like I said, when the concern was present, it would read zero volts. With the key on, it would read zero volts. It should read battery voltage. So when I used a test light between battery positive and just touched it to the piercing probe there, every time I did, that ignition run start sense would read battery voltage. And I knew that I had the right circuit, and I knew that we were good to go. And what we found was we were able to start the vehicle when we did that. So we knew, you know, basically because we had 12 volts coming out of the wireless ignition node, but we didn't have 12 volts at the tipum. Um, and then when we applied 12 volts at the tipum, it starts and the scan tool uh, data PID changed. We knew we were good. We knew we had an open circuit in between the wireless ignition node and the totally integrated power module. But let me show you what we found under the dash initially. We found, you know, here's the wireless ignition node. What we found, this was actually plugged in here. 
and then that original harness, or I should say this was plugged in here, and then that original harness was plugged into that. And this is all some aftermarket stuff that was put in here. Uh, I data link or something. So we before we even really went too far, we bypassed that and just plugged the harness directly into the wireless ignition node and it, uh, it didn't make any difference. So we were thinking that we were dealing with something with this aftermarket setup, but it didn't seem to make a difference. So what we did end up finding a, um, an open. Let me see if I can show. So we've done you a solid and got this thing up out. The open a little more. But as you can see, you see some of that wire damage there. There's our pink wire right there. Broken half. And there's the other part of it, right there. Yeah, and the white. There's a white wire that's damaged too. Look at that. What do you guys think? Rodent? Anyways, that's our culprit. We'll get it fixed up and see how we. I'm sorry about the bad deal. I was hoping I did take a video showing these um, broken wires or damaged wires, but. Um, it's easier just for me to show you screen captures here we've uploaded into the customer repair order. And this gentleman said that he went out of town and it was fine before he left and he came back and it was not fine. So um, you can see the damage. I don't know if it's a, a rodent or what. But anyways, this is where it was located. You know, we checked underneath the hood and there's a connector before the bulkhead and we had battery voltage of that connector before the bolt head, bulkhead I should say. But way down here, uh, you can see where the heat shrink is. That's where the, um, the damage in the wiring was. So. And anyways, um, we got that fixed up and see if we can do this now. I thought that was me. <laughs> it's another Dodge Ram next to me just started. Let's see if I can... It's very tough. There we go. There we go. You heard it start up. So we've got it good. we got it fixed up. Um, just wanted to kind of show you what we found. I haven't been... Uh, I haven't made a video in a while. Just kind of miss you guys. So just wanted to show you what we found. And uh, yeah, show you what we found. And show you what we found. Hope you guys liked what we found. All right, well, <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much for, uh, thank you so much for hanging out with us. <laughs> uh, good to see you guys, like always, and uh, until next time, take care. Yeah.